This is Beethoven, and um, I chose him to do because he really inspired me. He had, not only did he lose his hearing, but he had a lot of digestive issues. He really suffered in his life. And I came across a letter that he wrote to his um, brother where he talked about how he didn't think he could go on, how he wanted to take his life, and but that he wasn't going to give up until he had produced everything in this time that um, God had given him to produce. And that um, when I look at him, I think, well, if God, if Beethoven can, you know, still create this amazing work with such a terrible disability as not being able to hear, I mean, for a composer, that's just unthinkable. If he could still do that, then no matter what it is that I have to go through, I can do that too. I can keep going. I can, you know, conquer whatever is out there for me to conquer. And um, I, when I, this is part of a series of um, about eight different sculptures. It's called the Earthen Vessel series, and all of the sculptures in the series focus on uh, sort of the relationship between physical suffering and creative energy, and how we bring creative energy into the world. So all the sculptures have an opening someplace at the top, and an opening someplace in the front, and it talks about how energy, creative energy, comes into the world and manifests. Um, and my primary goal in making these works are, is to create artwork that's healing for other people to look at. I know it's kind of a lofty goal that, you know, may, you know I'm probably don't, I'm not attaining, but I'm very inspired by medieval alchemists who, um, a lot of people think they were trying to create gold, but that's not really it. They were trying to purify matter. And they believed that as you, um, as they purified external matter, they were purifying their spirit and their souls. And so I've always believed that if an artist, when they struggle with their work, and they, I, I think all struggle in art is about ego, ego versus creative energy. Are you going to surrender and let what really wants to come through come through? Or are you going to try and control it? And so as the artist learns to let go of their ego, they're healed, and that healing energy is captured in the sculpture. And hopefully, when a person looks at it, that healing energy resonates with them, and somehow they are um, healed, and they're able to either see or feel things in a different way. One of the things that I really want to do with my artwork is I want to switch that conversation. Everybody knows how much is wrong with the world. We see it on the news, we see it in the movies, we see people being killed, we see all the negative is poured into us all the time. And I want to switch the conversation to a conversation of praise. Let's look at what is good and pure and what it is that we want to preserve and start working on that instead of sending all of our energy into what I call addiction to darkness. That we are so obsessed with the dark that we can't see the path to something better. And that's, I feel, the artist's real responsibility. We have a responsibility to what is light and good in the world. And I'm not saying artists shouldn't display, like this piece displays the, the pain that he went through, but it transforms it and it sees what's good about that pain. It does, doesn't leave us sitting in the pain with no place to go. Colors are very symbolic to me. I have had experiences of color that um, have, have physically changed me. And so whenever I use a color, it, it's because it sort of, it has a deep personal meaning. And usually I, um, that meaning has to do with transformation and how, um, you know, how things are transformed from here to here.